segment four, swarming is the new surge. And once, once again, from the new rules of war, instead of continually surging large numbers of troops to trouble spots, the basic response of a swarm force would be to go swiftly in small numbers and strike the attackers at many points. Close quote. So, I don't know what you mean in the sense that in reading this article, you make an assertion, you make an assertion, you make an assertion, and I'm able to imagine roughly what, what that might have meant in Baghdad, say, or Afghanistan. Well, think what, about what, Afghanistan yeah, in the beginning. Okay, so how do we... That, how, that's the, they went very, very quickly. And, and by the way, you'll love the story. We dropped a bunch of guys in by air, right? Only, no, only because Donald Rumsfeld said, do it. The general, there's a point in my book where it, the, the book is really about this debate between the traditionalists and the Rumsfeld view. Rumsfeld basically says, you're going to do this, and uh, Bob Woodward reports this in his account of it. He said some generals just put their heads on the desk when, he, when he, they didn't want to insert the special forces. They wanted to continue the bombing campaign. Anyway, you, so you take these guys, and you know, we're just talking um, a month or so after 9-1-1, and these guys are on the ground. How many? Uh, 200, 200, 11 special forces A-teams, 200 individuals. Dropped in 11 quite widely dispersed yeah, places. and you know why they were riding horses in the beginning? It was for identification, friend or foe. That's yeah. our attack aircraft. would know if it's on a horse, don't blow it up. If it's in a vehicle, just kill all the vehicles. And uh, the point is they were all Even over. I would have found a way to stay on the saddle in those circumstances. Well, exactly. And uh, any, anyway, uh, so they're all over the place. The Taliban don't know where they're going to turn up next, and everywhere they go, these guys are looking at them and calling in coordinates and getting them blown up, and it's an amazing... So that would be an example of swarming rather than surging, and, and I think it's... Um, that will be seen some decades down the road as Rumsfeld's masterpiece. I mean, he was not in office all that long, and he got that campaign pulled together. I'm not a you know, particular apologist for Donald Rumsfeld, but I, I've only but it's an met him on a few occasions. Right. But this is a guy who saw a glimpse of the future of military affairs. Swarming is the new surging, Victor? Uh, we're talking about different phases. So the, I think everybody, this is what's so tragic about American politics. When Donald Trump, uh, when the Taliban were out and when the statue fell, Donald Rumsfeld was a rock star. He was on the cover of everybody. Right. And the people who praised him the loudest would be the people who opportunistically turned on him. So that, that's another story. But the, the question is the second phase. Okay, so you, get, you swarm these people and you crack the morale of the enemy and they filter back out and they're back into Waziristan or they're going across the border in Iran. And then you've got to build a civil society. Because in Afghanistan, is distinct from Iraq, we didn't kill that many of the enemy. Yeah, this is we scared them off. Is that See, right? Because whether you believe in John's view or you're a traditionalist, you have to accept in the postmodern world there are certain limitations on military practice. We can't drop, we can't firebomb Tokyo like we did in March 11th. We can't do a Dresden. We can't do Hamburg. We can't obliterate in the way that, and that is the classic Roman ingredients for a Roman peace that you obliterate, you humiliate the enemy, and you frighten them so much. I remember my father's. I said to him once. When, why did, how did you land in Tokyo 10 days after the, the armistice? And he said, they didn't want to look at a B-29. They landed and they were, I thought, well, didn't they swarm on you or shoot you? And he said, no. We would have gone right back up and started all over again. Well, you can't do that today for a variety of reasons. Interconnected, globalized, international morale, all of these things, good and bad. So what we're talking about now is how can you defeat an enemy when you can't crush him, you can't humiliate him and you can't have a Roman peace and the, and the question is I think John's demonstrated that these network approaches are very effective in taking out really formidable enemies that have all the advantages of you know terrain logistics everything but where the, the debate is today is okay you defeat these people you can't humiliate you can't kill them all now how are you going to ensure the victory and I hear this is where the number uh, question the, the traditionalists now say, okay, you guys were a brilliant three week, but you need visible people walking around with yeah. Humvees, and, and that's where we are now. How do you do that? What, how many numbers? What's the percentage of people per square mile? And you argue that the swarming approach or the small approach works even in establishing the peace. Yeah, but I think there's a synthesis here that that's important. Victor's absolutely right. The, the 200 individuals of the first phase, the breakthrough in Afghanistan, were not going to be able to secure that society. You do have to have presence in many places. Swarming takes on a different hue, 
in, in that setting. And I'd say Iraq late in 2006 and 2007, when we established the hundreds of outposts, was an example of swarming al-Qaeda in Iraq. Because suddenly we were everywhere and put them on the run, and that's when the enormous amount of attrition of the insurgents occurred. And we're, So I, I agree that you have to have more for that phase. The question is, how much more? And, and as Victor said, you know, the 30,000 surge in terms of historical terms of uh, wars, that's really not a, a big reinforcement. And my point is, if only 10% of the people in country were going outside the wire into the outpost, you could use them in this fashion with far fewer troops overall.